Hey everybody, Yost here from Cromer Sport Fishing, based in Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, it's COVID season, everyone's sitting at home, not a lot to do, so I thought I'd put together a few little tying videos here. So the first one we're going to do today is the Hobo Spay. Pretty, uh, pretty cool pattern that we fish a lot here in British Columbia. And uh, here we go. So the hobo spay is a pretty simple pattern to tie. It doesn't take a lot of fancy materials and it is a really effective fly for, for salmon, for steelhead, uh, and for trout here in British Columbia, mainly bull trout, but it's a pattern that we fish a lot in the spring and a lot in the fall. Uh, and I'm gonna give you a run through of, of how to tie it. Keep in mind, this is sort of the first tying video I've done. So um, any feedback is appreciated. Uh, there's a lot of people uh, a lot of tires out there that are much more innovative and much better tires than I am. But uh, I just thought I'd do something here that was fun that, that people hopefully get something out of and uh, throw a look, throw my style into it. Um, before we start, there's a really cool book that just came out. Uh, it's on Bob Clay by Art Lindgren, who's a very well-known uh, author here in British Columbia. And Bob Clay, if you don't know Bob Clay and the Clay family from Kispiox, uh, Bob Clay and his family are, are some of the most gracious people that you'd ever want to meet. Um, they've always been really hospitable when I've been up there. Um, uh, this is a book about Bob uh, and the cane rods that he builds and his family, his wife Kathy and, and, uh, and all his kids. It's a really cool book if you have a chance to get it. I got this one at Michael and Young but I know that they have them at uh, High Water Tackle as well and probably other fly, fly shops around Vancouver. This is a really good time to support your local fly shops. Uh, they definitely need it. And um, yeah, let's get started here. Um, going to run it through and, and uh, hopefully it goes well. Cheers. So what do you need to start tying this thing? Uh, simple, pretty simple materials. Orange thread, some Amherst, a couple different couple of colors of dubbing. I use the Rio Wirebite. Uh, 20 or 30 pound pretty much for all my trailer hooks and uh, some flash -aboo and some spay some marabou spay you get started here uh, wrapping getting the underbody wrapped into my intruder shank it can be really any style of intruder shank you want um, but you kind of go medium size the real wire bite is really good stuff I use uh, 20 and 30 but use it on almost all of the all the steelhead flies that I'm that I'm running trailer hook on here I uh, just folding it over and I neglected in the in the material list to, to mention I'm usually running a, a, a size 2 Gamagatsu octopus hook on all these flies so that's kind of the go-to and and you can tie it with or without the the hook to begin with but I'm just tying it with the hook here to now I'm just securing the wire down to the shank. It's pretty easy to do. Um, I've never had a wire pull out of, of one of these, and this is sort of the lazy person way of doing it. But a little bit of glue, wrap it down, tighten it up. Um, it's not going anywhere. I've never had it pull out on a rock or, or a fish. Next thing is I'm going to start building a little dubbing loop here. Dubbing loops are easy. Um, hopefully you know how to do one. Just got my finger here securing a little bit of the loop. Gonna throw a little green dubbing in, sort of the hobo spay go-to. Twist it up a bunch of times, and I'm just aiming for this to cover. I don't know the last, the last sort of a quarter or, or third of, of the fly. It's not, you know whatever. There's no science to it, but kind of where I want to be. I'm just gonna wrap it up here and get up, and then tie it off, snip it, and uh, get ready for putting a little guinea fowl in and a long piece of guinea fowl I, I just got lucky and got some good stuff um, anytime I'm using any of these feathers if I'm if I'm tying I'm just gonna clean up the feather a little bit just before uh, I tie it in that just makes everything easier I'm just gonna just sort of fan it out here this uh, this way when I palmer it onto the hook it's actually gonna lay out better and it's just a little bit easier some some people will score it with their scissors 
I find this little sort of system works good and I'm just snipping it off here so when I tie it down on the shank it's uh, it's nice and easy to tie down a couple wraps get it secured and uh, there it is so that's just gonna sit there and then I'm going to start another dubbing loop uh, second one and this is gonna be sort of for the rest of the body of the fly uh, I'm just using some lavender ice here you can use whatever color you want you can use black and blue whatever it doesn't really matter um, ice dubbing super easy to work with kind of picks out good just get it sit it doesn't really you're not going to see much of this part of the fly anyways to be perfectly honest so it doesn't really matter but i'm just going to wrap it forward here and get it up i'm not really getting it super close to the eye you'll you'll see here that at the end i'm kind of tying it off with the with a bunch of space left and and you'll see why i do that in a little bit and gives uh gives room to work the rest of the materials and and sort of makes for a nice clean fly on the front end which is always aesthetically pleasing snip that up and then i'm uh i'm gonna get ready here just to take my guinea fowl and and start palming it forward so this is uh this is kind of a part just take your time doing this if you if you haven't palmered a, this kind of feather before it's uh it just takes a little bit of work not much but what you're uh, sort of wanting to do is you just kind of wanted to pull pull the fibers back as you wrap it you don't want to wrap it on having a having a little dubbing or a, like a dubbing pick is kind of a good thing here i'm just using my fingers just to sort of pull it back and and you can be rough with this feather this is a pretty pretty durable feather so just sort of squeezing it back here getting it up to the front of the fly once it's up i'm just going to tie it off a bunch of times here um, secure it and do a little snip clean it up and then i can uh, i can just sort of let those feathers get those feathers out the reason that you have the guinea fowl in there is to get this marabou spay um, laid out and, and give it a little bit of body from underneath so uh, anytime you're using marabou spay get rid of the stuff that you're not going to use it's just always in the way and, and it's a little bit of a mess so uh, and there's a big difference between good spay and, and bad space hackle so find one that that's kind of sort of has the length just to cover back towards the towards the hook and then uh, i'm just going to kind of pick it apart here get it tied down and and go ahead and, and wrap it um, try not to wrap the the fibers on top of one another it's part of part of a, a nice looking using marabou part of the nice part of it it's easy and it's cheap to use but it's one of those things where it takes a little bit of practice so i just kind of wet my fingers a little bit get all that stuff pulled back and then i can i can wrap it forward with much more ease than if i was just sort of tying it in having a big mess once you have that marabou uh, all tied down and tied off uh, you're gonna go get out your amherst and you're just gonna find sort of some long lengths again sort of same length as as the marabou just extending back over the hook and uh, you maybe need I don't know 10 fibers uh, you don't need much more and I'm just gonna clean them up here a little bit I'm just gonna snip them um, and you'll see why in a sec because I'm going to uh, wrap them down on the hook and I just want to get rid of that of that so um, any of these are all they're always gonna have a little bit of a curve to them right um, depending on which way they come off off the off the feather so what I want to do is I just want to take the curve and I kind of want to find the curve and, and get the curve laying over the top end of the hook or, or, or over the fly so it sort of goes with it. And don't worry about how they're sitting right now because what you're going to actually, you're going to tie these in with maybe two wraps each and then what you're going to do is uh, is we're going to unwrap the whole thing and there's just a little trick here to, to make a smaller head. A uh, pretty simple one too but it's kind of cool when you're putting in a bunch of these feathers. So i just am i'm taking maybe one or two fibers here there's two right there and i'm just just tying them in and, and i'm putting you know 10 in five or for or six or whatever you want and again it really doesn't matter and this is just white amherst here so once uh once i get them all tied down here um, i only have them in two wraps so you could pull these out really easily but what it's going to do is is once they're there i'm actually uh i'm going to just sort of grab everything in my two fingers here three fingers and i'm just going to unwrap it all but i'm going to secure everything with my with my left hand 
And as I unwrap all this, obviously I'm unwrapping it off the hook, but what it's going to let me do is it's going to let me save a bunch of, a bunch of thread and a bunch of space and, and just make for a smaller head. So now I'm going to sort of wrap two or three. It's almost like spinning some hair. I'm going to wrap two or three uh, loose and then, and then tighten it up and then boom, I'm done super super easy way of doing it and, and just a really nice way to make for a smaller head on your fly and then uh, just go around and, and clean them up and all of a sudden instead of having a whole bunch of thread and a bunch of material up on the front of your fly you just made for a little head and it's going to secure the last couple here and, uh, and get those all done um, next flash should be this is the last bit of the fly uh, don't don't put too much flash in this thing if you look at these things commercially tied they don't have a lot of flash in them and it's kind of one of the nice parts of these flies is not the big flashy typical steelhead fly um, I, i'll take i'll take three strands and what i'll do is i'll just just time in half here messing around they didn't want to sit down there for me but what i'll do is 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 get them to lay down over the top of the fly i'm just tying these over the top wrap them down and then just uh just have the two lengths of them and just back on itself and then I can tie down that sort of secures it so and that's that's pretty much the fly there it's not a super complicated fly to tie it, it's super fun to tie um, it has a kind of a few good components to it and it looks good it's just one of those flies that, that really swims nicely in the water you get that thing in the water and it swims nice and I just a couple half hitches here to to get rid of it and I'll pop it off give it a snip and then um I don't glue I'm not going to glue this one right away I'll tie a dozen of them and and glue all the heads at once and then there it is that's sort of what it looks like um sitting in the vise pinch your barbs people sorry it's, uh, I haven't done got that far yet but definitely pinch the barbs and and there you go so there you have it hobo spay uh effective fun easy fly to tie uh I hope you enjoyed the tutorial uh if you did uh throw the video a like um, if you're on social media, you can check us out on the gram, uh, links below, Facebook, all the other good stuff, and uh, check back soon. I'll be putting a few of these together. Thanks for checking it out. Cheers.